your father. Just bow our heads for prayer. Father, I just thank you for this opportunity to be here to be part of this wedding. I pray that your blessing be on this wedding, that everything that happens here today would have your blessing. And that this would be a moment that James and Harry would remember forever. And we'll just thank you for that in Jesus' name. Amen. You can be seated. I'm going to talk a little loud because the, we're having a problem with the microphone, so hopefully you'll hear me. If you don't, it doesn't matter as long as James and Harry. <laughs> James and Carrie, I just want you to know that I'm, I'm very honored and privileged to uh, be able to officiate at this ceremony. And uh, you'll be in my prayers on a regular basis. I also want you to know that I'm available 24 hours a day, <laughs> seven days a week. And I, I say that try to, but I mean, I mean that. Because every marriage has those moments where it's a little bit tough. And you, and you may need somebody to talk to. And I hope you, you know that you can come and talk to me anytime. That I'm available as, as a pastor and as a friend. Uh, I've known you, Carrie, since you were just a little girl. And you've grown up to be a fun young woman. I've known James for several years now and seen him go from a teenager to a young man. I've enjoyed being able to spend a number of weeks with the two of you in counseling, sharing, and talking. I, I think you guys are way ahead of the ballgame as far as being able to uh, go into this marriage ready to deal with a lot of the issues that, that have come, come to a marriage. Uh, I, I know the Lord has great plans for you. If you're willing to allow Jesus to be the Lord of your home and, and the Lord of your lives, uh, there's some really good things in store. That you can have a marriage that not only survives, but it will thrive. A marriage that other people, other young people can look to and say, you know, that, that's what I would like to have. You know, we, we live in a time when marriages are falling apart left and right. And even the marriages that don't seem like they're fairly functioning. But when there's a good marriage, people notice. And I, I think people are going to notice that you're going to have a good marriage. And that you're going to be a great, a great couple together. And a good parent someday. Uh, with Jesus in your marriage, your home will not only, not only survive, but it will thrive. And that's what you want. You want a marriage that just thrives. It's the greatest thing that ever happened. You can look back 20 years from now and be as happy then as you are this day as you stand here before each other. A happy and loving home, though, doesn't happen by an accident. It's a lot of hard work. Every If, if you talk to anybody that's been married for a long time and they're happy, they'll tell you it takes a lot of work to, to maintain that happiness. It's going to take both of you really determined rolling up your sleeves and saying, I'm going to bring everything I can uh, to this marriage to make this the best marriage, to have a great home, so that uh, it's something that you, you want to go home to your spouse every night at the work, wherever you can, because this is the love of your life. The same joy that you have today, the same excitement that you have today, uh, can, can be your 20 years, 30 years, 40 years, and uh, I'm praying the best. I just really feel like God's looking for some young people that he can say, this is what a happy home is like. And it can start when you're young. You carry through your entire lives. So with Jesus in your lives, you'll, you'll love each other. You'll believe in each other. You'll trust each other. And, and you'll protect each other. Your home is a safe place where you know that, that you'll both be protecting each other at all times. And every home is unique, and we've talked about that over the last few weeks. You have to decide... What's the best way for your home to function? And, and then just let that happen. And you figure out your goals together and how decisions are made. And just kind of have a good, uh, a good home. And your home will be unique to anybody else. You don't have to pattern after anyone. You, you two and God. And uh, with God factored in, you know, great home. And uh, you know, the Bible says in, in Genesis chapter 2 and verse 24 that a man who leaves his father and mother wife and the two become one. And that word cleave means to hang on. And, and there'll be times in your marriage that you're going to have to hang on to the vows of your They'll be stretching. You're just not sure. But you hang on. Because those times go away. They pass. And you get through it and you get to the other side. And you're better for it. Because you, you become 
stronger in your love for each other and your commitment to each other as, as you weather storms. And so just remember, hang on. That's really an important thing. And marriage is, you know, I've heard people say marriage is a 50-50 proposition, but, but it's not. Marriage is 100%. James giving 100% to marriage. Harry bringing 100% to marriage. And when you have two people bringing 100%, it's going to be success. You're going to make it. And, and God will give you the tools that you need to negotiate uh, little bumps in the road. And there will be bumps um, that you uh, probably don't see eye to eye. You could have hurt feelings. You know, anger. And all of the, the adverse emotions that come with not agreeing about something. But God will give you the tools. You commit it. And you just remember We live, in a, we live in a world where people stay married only as long as uh, their spouse makes them happy. You quit making me happy, then I'm happy. But see, that's not the kind of marriage that, that God wants. God wants a marriage that says, it doesn't, it's not about you making me happy, but it's what can I bring to them? What can I do to make you happy? You know, when you work hard at making your spouse happy and bringing the best to your spouse, he or she will respond in the same way. And so it's not about your spouse. It's always going to be about you. desire that, then you're going to bring the best you know, out of each other. And uh, just one last thought is that uh, I know that the last thing you want to do is listen to uh, so I'll quit about 49 minutes. <laughs> but actually, I just want you to remember this. If you remember only one thing that, that I say today, it's found in 1 Corinthians 13 and verse 8. And it says this, that love keeps no record of wrong. That every day is a brand new day that you have to be willing to forgive each other after every disagreement. After every time that you have resolved an issue or even an issue that is not resolved, you have to be able to just say, I'm not going to remember that it's gone. I give it to God. And I forgive my mate and move on. Because if you don't, you'll, you'll develop this really long list of wrongs. Because if you, the longer you're married, the, the longer the list will be. Because we're human and we do things that each other. And say things we shouldn't say. And so every day, every night when you go to bed, leave it with them. And I, I let the day go. And help me to have grace to not remember any hurt that I had that I received from my spouse. And then the next day, get up and it's a clean And if you'll do that, it'll be a whole lot easier the next time you have a dream. Because the last thing you want to do is to bring up everything that's ever happened. Everything that's ever happened. Every that's ever happened. So remember, God says it's love. God does to keep a record of your own so you can't keep a record of your own. If you remember nothing else, and you remember this, you're going to go a long way from the man. But always be ready to forgive. To always love. Always trust. Always believe in each other. And always protect each other. So that neither one of you have to worry about, uh, about each other. Why don't you join me? Before God and these witnesses, will you, James Anthony DiCarlo, take Carrie Lynn Miner to be your wife? Will you love and respect Carrie? Will you be honest with Carrie? Will you love Carrie whether you have much or whether you have little? Will you be there for Carrie in times of sickness and in times of health? And will you continue this relationship with Carrie that you're starting right here? until you breathe your last breath. Carrie Lynn Miner, will you take James Anthony DiCarlo to be your lawfully wedded husband? Will you love and respect James? Will you be honest with him? Will you in times of sickness and health, in times of laughter or weeping, be faithful to be there for James? And will you continue this relationship with James? Let's bow our heads for prayer. Father, you've heard these vows. You've witnessed these two young people standing before these witnesses and your throne.
committing themselves to each other, pledging themselves in marriage. And I pray, Father, for James to be the kind of husband that he wants to be and that you want him to be. Or that, that the blessing of God would be on him as a man, as a husband. I pray for Carrie, Lord, that you bless her. May she be everything that she desires to be as a wife that you desire her to be. And may they together bring the best out of each other. May they have a, a marriage that's strong and vibrant, that thrives, that glows, that's full of the love of the Lord, full of happiness, joy, and peace, and strength. And Lord, may this only be the beginning of many years of total happiness and commitment to each other in marriage. Bless and honor these vows, I pray, in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Can we have the rings? <coughs> The ring symbolizes a circle of love that never ends. What you start here today should never end. And as you place these rings on each other's fingers, I want you to also repeat after me and look into the eyes of the one you love. And I want you to say these words. You are my beloved. And you are my friend. With this ring. Since you have before God and these witnesses solemnly made mutual pledges of affection and vows of fidelity, I as a minister of the gospel of Jesus Christ and by the laws of the state of Oregon, do pronounce that you are husband and wife, and what God has joined together let nobody tear apart. James, you can kiss your friend. <laughs>